Welcome back to Coding with Kiskit Runtime. I'm your host, Nick Braun. In this video, we'll look at an algorithm that uses both the sampler and estimator primitives in the same session. The variational quantum deflation algorithm allows us to calculate the excited state energies of a molecule in addition to its ground state. It works by removing the lower energy states by penalizing their overlap with the previous found states in the variational cost function, a process called deflation. Unlike VQE, this algorithm requires the sampler primitive in addition to the estimator for use in calculating the overlap used in the cost function. Let's start with the problem we set up from the VQE example in episode 5. First, we'll retrieve the poly operator from the hydrogen Hamiltonian. From hydrogen import poly operator. H2 op equals poly operator. And then we'll print it, h2 up. And then we'll numerically diagonalize the Hamiltonian. Import numpy as np, eigens exact equals np dot linalg dot eigvals of a Hermitian matrix, h2 op dot 2 matrix. And then we can print these. And we see there are about minus 1.86, minus 1.24, minus 0.88, and minus 0.22. Let's import all the other necessary libraries, including the same ones we used in episode 5 for the ground state energy. SPSA from kiskit.algorithms.com optimizers, import SPSA, which is the simultaneous perturbation stochastic approximation. It's a great optimizer for noisy environments. We'll use compute uncompute from kiskit.algorithms.statefidelities, import compute uncompute. This will let us calculate the energy state overlaps, which we need for the VQD algorithm. Efficient SU2 as our onsets again from kiskit.circuit.library import efficient SU2, which is our hardware efficient to local circuit. And then from kiskit.primitives import sampler and estimator. We will first do the VQD on the state vector simulator. And then we'll instantiate these. On SOTS equals efficient SU2 on two qubits. Sampler equals sampler. Estimator equals estimator. And fidelity is going to be calculated by a compute uncompute which will calculate the overlap between two different states. And we need to put the sampler in there to calculate this overlap. Next, we'll build the callback function and instantiate our SPSA optimizer, just as we did in episode 5. Callback equals lambda. On the number of function evaluations, the parameters, the function value, the step, and whether it's accepted, and we'll print valuation, number of function evaluations, and the value of the function evaluation. And then we put it in our optimizer. Optimizer equals SPSA, callback equals callback, max iterations equals 1,000. The variational quantum deflation algorithm relies on variationally finding excited state energies by penalizing the overlap with the previously found lower energy states, which is where the sampler comes in. Because each state representing energy levels is orthogonal to each other, there should be no overlap variationally between the excited state and those lower energies previously found. This is enforced in the cost function by the parameter beta that scales the overlap with the previous wave functions. We'll do this calculation for two energy levels, the ground state and the first excited state, with kk equals 2. And then we'll use beta as 10, which will multiply the overlap function for our penalty. 
We need to store our results and their wave functions for use with the overlap. So we'll create empty arrays here. And then for each energy level, we'll do this calculation. We'll extend this to any number of energy levels. We create our cost function as a lambda function as before, but now it takes a more complicated form due to the addition of the overlap penalty. Cost func equals lambda params estimator dot run onsots dot h2 op parameter values equals params and then dot result dot values zero is our energy. This is exactly as before, but now we need to add the betas times the sum of the overlaps of the wave functions and the previous leaf found values so that we penalize that wave function from occurring again. Sum beta times fidelity dot run, which calculates the overlaps between the wave functions determined by onsots and onsots, the same circuits, but generated with different parameters. Params, which we're minimizing over uh, currently, but then the parameters of the wave functions determined previously. IDX dot result dot fidelities, which gives the overlap value. For IDX in range EIDX. The result of the optimizer minimization is exactly as the same before. Result equals optimizer dot minimize cost function. And we'll start with all zeros again. NP dot zeros for the number of parameters in our onsots. But now we need to store the result of this wave function. Wave funks dot append. The result dot x gives the parameters of that result. This is the optimum parameters that give us the wave function of that state. Then we'll also append the results of estimator dot run on sots h2 op parameter values equals result dot x now, the optimized ones, dot result dot values, the zeroth is the energy. This is the energy without the overlap penalty and the cost function. Nominally, that overlap penalty will get to zero, though, during the minimization process. And then we'll print the eigenvalue we're on. Eigenvalue eidx and our results eidx. And we see our evaluations. Let's compare our results to the exact values we obtained before. Print results and the exact eigenvalues. Print eigens exact. to our energy level 2. And we see good agreement between the two values. Now let's do the same experiment, but on actual hardware. We'll start by importing the estimator and sampler from our hardware client, along with session and options. From Qiskit IBM runtime, import estimator, sampler, session, and options. And then we'll configure some options. Options equals options. Options dot execution dot shots equals 5,000. Let's do options dot optimization level 2, which is equivalent to transpilation level 2, but with dynamical decoupling. And options dot resilience level equals 1 which includes measurement error mitigation in the form of twirled readout error extinction, or T-Rex, for fun. Then we import our runtime service and select a backend. From Qiskit IBM runtime, import Qiskit runtime service. 
service equals kiskit runtime service backend equals service dot git backend IBM logos. Now we can run the same VQD algorithm by instantiating the sampler and estimator in our runtime session. We'll start with an empty results and empty wave functions, and then enter our session context with session service equals service backend equals backend as session estimator equals estimator options equals options sampler equals sampler options equals options our fidelity is going to be equal to compute uncompute but on the sampler that will run on actual hardware and then we'll do our loop for EIDX in range KK, which is 2. Cost func equals lambda params. Then we have our energy determined by estimator.run. And our onsots h2 operator parameter values equals params dot result dot values, zero gives the energy. And then we add our overlap penalty, sum beta times beta times fidelity, which gives the overlap, dot run between onsots and the same onsots, but with different parameters, params and the previous wave functions. We need our result and the fidelities of that for each of the previous energies. And our result is obtained the same way as before, by finding the minimum of the optimizer, minimize cost func starting with all zeros, on sots.num parameters. We'll append the parameters of those optimized wave functions with wavefunks.append, result.x, and results.append the estimator dot run on sots h2 op parameter values equal to the optimized parameters with result dot values zero. And then we'll write down the eigenvalue. Eigenvalue eidx results EIDX. Of course, since we're running on real hardware, these results will take some time to obtain. I've pulled results from a previous run and displayed them below. And when the job is done, we can display the results of the calculation. Print results. Here we see the results are a bit higher than the exact values since we're running on noisy hardware. Let's plot the convergence relative to the exact value, retrieving the data from our session ID, which can be retrieved from the session, job, or the IBM Quantum Platform. Jobs equals service dot jobs. Session ID equals session dot session ID. Limit equals none. And in this case, we need to separate the ground from the excited state energies. So we'll note when the program ID becomes sampler. SIDX equals next JIDX for JIDX job and enumerate jobs. If job dot program ID equals sampler and job 
dot done. And we'll reverse the order. Now we know the index of the second energy level. We can build dictionaries of our jobs categorized by that energy level. E jobs equals empty dict. E jobs for the ground state is going to be an empty dict. E jobs for the excited state will be an empty dict. And then E jobs of the ground state corresponding to the estimator are going to be those jobs that happen before SI dx minus 2. And E jobs for the estimator for the first excited state are going to be those jobs that start at index SI dx minus 1 and are every other. So we put a 2 there. And if we wanted E jobs corresponding to the sampler corresponding to the excited state energy will be those other ones. Jobs starting at SIDX and every other. And then we can pull the result of each of those jobs. We'll put energies as an empty dictionary, then energies corresponding to the ground state is equal to job.result.values with a zero for job in E jobs corresponding to the ground state and the estimator. And energies corresponding to the first excited state, the same thing, job.result.values, zero, for job, but instead the E jobs corresponding to the estimator of the first excited state. Then we'll plot the results for each energy level with plt.plot range length of energies of that energy index. The energies of that index. A label for that index. For each index, And we'll do the same with the exact energies. plt.plot range. It's idx. Eidx. Eigens exact. Eidx times length energies. EIDX and a dashed line for EIDX and range. Then we'll add some labels as we always should. X label is evaluation count, or more specifically, iteration count. And the Y label is the energy. We'll add the legend. And our error is due to a missing parenthesis. There we go. Now we can see our ground and our first excited state, where the first excited state is not having great convergence. Perhaps we should try some more error mitigation. In this video, we showed how to use the sampler and estimator primitives in a single session. We hope you've enjoyed this series on executing algorithms on real quantum hardware with Qiskit runtime. Thanks for watching.